Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. Hey book lovers. I'm so glad to have you back here. It's so exciting to be back. I haven't done this in quite a while. I haven't filmed in a while. And right now I'm going to be doing a wrap up of the books that I've read since I think somewhere around the March time. So there's quite a lot of books to get through, but I'm really excited to share the books that I have read. I have so far read, I think 21 or 22 books somewhere around those lines and I'm really really excited to share with you some of the books that I've read Thank you so much for constantly being here as always Thank you very much for choosing me over and over and over and over again. I've got my cup of tea here I've got the list of the books that I have uh, Read since the March time and please also do take into cognizance. I have not It's been a while since I've read some of these books Maybe the synopsis might be a little bit tricky on my end, but I'm going to try very hard to remember what it was that I was reading at the time. And we're going to get into the video. Thank you so much for being here. As always, I appreciate you from here and to the moon and back. And let's get into the video. So a lot of the books that I've got here are books that are on audio because a lot of the time I'm driving, I'm in the car and I'm listening to audio books. Some of them I do have here, which are um, hard copy uh, books of the books that I've read since. Wow, my English, it's, it's bad. It's bad. Um, but some of them are here. Some of them, I don't have them with me because I was listening to them on audio. So I'm going to put a picture of the book here as I describe the synopsis to you and what I thought of the book. So, so starting with the first book, this is a book that I absolutely loved, loved, loved. This is How to Kill Men and Get Away With It. This is by Katie Brent. And let me tell you, I rated this book a four and a half out of five on Goodreads because I could not put it down. For the life of me, it is so sarcastically, satirically dark and it is, it's just amazing. I think it's one of those books that, where you have to suspend your beliefs, especially about what's going on in the novel because any human person who has a right mind within them, inside of them, will know that things like this shouldn't be happening. This is not okay. This lady's got a problem. So here we follow Kitty Collins, if I'm not, yes. We follow Kitty Collins, who is a socialite turned influencer, right? So everybody knows her from online. She's always posting. She comes from a well-off family and all of that. But something happens one night when she comes back from dinner or a pub with her friends and she's walking home and she finds that a man is following her. Let me tell you. So this man is following her and she's like really, really like uncomfortable. She's like, okay, okay, are you really going to try this with me, sir? But is this what you're going to do? Okay, shop, grand. And then she ends off the man. Okay, that same night she ends off the man and she says, you know what? I was protecting myself. So many women have to go through these types of situations where they're uncomfortable, where they don't feel safe, even walking from home and all of that. But she doesn't realize that it ignites a passion in her for killing men but she justifies it to herself that well i'm doing the world a favor okay i'm doing women a favor i know for a fact that these men shouldn't even be here they shouldn't even be around they've done horrible things to women and she goes on a killing spree it is so entertaining wildly dark wildly satirical that's why i'm saying that you kind of have to suspend your belief with this one because uh we know that what we do know at the end of the day is that Kitty is a little bit of a psychopath. Okay, she's 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 crazy. She ends up doing these things and justifying it to herself. When in actual fact, there's nothing to justify here. It's wrong. What you're doing is wrong. Uh, but how the twists and turns come about and how um, she finds out, how people find out, how her friend finds out, and the connection there regarding her friend and her father's friend. Her friend and her friend's dad, rather, is just so good. While the entertaining, rated it a four out of five. If you want to try it, give it a shot. So the next book that I read is Almond, and the author is Son Yong Pyong. And this is a very quiet story that much, much reminded me of the novel Heaven by uh, Meiko Kawakami. I think so. Meiko Kawakami, which I read 
um, last year. She's the author behind, yes, Mako Kawakami. Correct. She's the author behind uh, Breakfast and Eggs. But Almond follows this young boy by the name of Yoon Jae, who was born with a particular condition called elixithymia. Elix elix elixithymia? Something like that, which basically entails that he can't control his emotions. He can't control anger, sadness. He can't control, you know, the feeling of love. He just doesn't understand them. He can't feel them. He can't respond to them, right? So he grows up with this condition in his head. And he calls this condition, this, um, he, he has this analogy with his mother where he says it's, uh, his brain is the size of an almond. And they talk around that and that's the central focus of the story however what it does is it's a quiet story that follows this young man this young boy Yoon Jae and he goes through a really difficult time because of his condition at school where he is bullied and um you know he's treated really badly but then meets this one girl who befriends him in his class and he, he manages to create a friendship out of that but it's a really really quiet story which follows Yoon Jae over the high school period and a little bit into his college years as well and it is so profoundly um atmospheric but it's profoundly quiet in the sense that you get a great character study of Yoon Jae and how his understanding of the world is given the condition that he has and I found it very very uh, enjoyable I didn't think it was fantastic or out of this world but it was easy to understand it was quite the enjoyable read for me and I, I felt for him I definitely did connect with the characters I connected with his mother and her sense of fear and dread every time her son would go to school and be bullied at school and how she would always just tell him you know keep to yourself don't uh, try to cause too much attention don't bring too much attention to you and something happens in the book where he he witnesses something and um, that changes his life forever um, and and also the relationship that he creates with this female friend of his that goes on over the span of the years and how he starts realizing that there is something that he's beginning to feel, especially when it comes to her, was just, it was really, really awesome. It was one of those quiet stories. Really, really enjoyed it. Then after that, shortly after that, I also read this one, which is The Woman in the Purple Skirt. And this is by uh, Imamura Natsuko. And I really enjoyed this one. So this one follows... There isn't any names, I believe, if I don't remember, if I remember correctly, there isn't any names. But here we're following our narrator who is talking to us about this woman that she is so entranced with. She cannot, she can't, everything about this woman and the life that she leads just entrances our narrator. She is so obsessed. You could actually even go as far as saying that she's quite obsessed with this woman in the purple skirt. And she's called the woman in the purple skirt because every time they go to work together, she ends up working with her. But every time she would see the woman on the bus and this woman would be wearing a purple skirt. On some days, this woman is disheveled. On some days, this woman works part-time jobs. She feels like, look, she wants to have this job. She has the job for like five days and then she decides, no, nope, I don't want to have the job until this woman ends up working with our narrator. And you start to see the narrator constantly just zoomed in and zeroed in on this woman's life. And it really is just also another really quiet story, which I thought I found really fascinating because I think what was behind that one was a character study of, um, you know, how you feel when you when you people watch and you find yourself so in, intoxicated and entranced by watching someone and watching their lives. And eventually their lives interconnect uh, because they end up working at a hotel together and something happens, of course, as with any other book, something happens that ends up bringing these two women's lives together um, intently, intensely and more intimately. And uh, I really enjoyed it. It's a good book. It's not a book to write home about. In fact, it might be a forgetful book for some, but for me, I really did enjoy it because I typically love books where there's a good character study. And um, that one that one did that for me. Then one evening, one weekend, I was at Diesel's house and he's got 
a whole list of manga that he reads and all of that. So I eventually decided to get into Spy Family, Volume 1. Listen, it's fantastic. <laughs> so in Spy Family, we follow this assassin, right? I don't remember their names. Um, these are not English names because it's, it's Japanese. But we follow this assassin who gets tasked with a job where he has to assassinate somebody right so but now before he can do this he needs to get close to the people surrounding that particular man that he's been tasked to off right so now to do that he needs to get a family he needs to get a daughter he needs to get a wife he needs to give off this life that he's living like he's just the perfect family man who's got a great job who goes to work and all of that and so in the first volume of spy family we follow the assassin's life where he goes to an orphanage looking for a a girl child who he needs to enter into this private school this really prestigious school of where his target uh, his target's daughter is in the very same school, right? So he goes and he looks for this kid at an orphanage and you start watching their relationship unfold. This kid is so excited, like, oh my God, I've got a dad now and this and that and the other. But this kid also has some powers as well where she can read minds. So she can read what her father is thinking and all of that so in moments where he he would be thinking to himself like i can't do this i can't be with this kid blah blah, blah. she'd automatically do something or say something like you know i love you so much and it's really it's cute it's cute i really enjoyed it uh it was my first dive actually into uh manga if it is manga, yeah, sure. Uh, it was my first dive into manga and I really, really enjoyed that one as well. It, it was pretty good. It was pretty good. Pretty good. And then I read Hold My Girl by Charlene Carr. Now, this book, I thought that I would really be excited to read about it because it followed these two women who were struggling to have children. So we follow Tess and we follow Catherine. Very, very different women, but at the same time from very different backgrounds, but go to the same fertility clinic where they take part in IVF so that they can have the potential of having a child. Fantastic. So I wanted to learn about more about IVF and all of that. This is a thriller novel. So what ends up happening is that when they both go in on the same day for the insemination, something happens and eggs are crossed. So essentially, the lady, one lady gets the child who actually belongs to the other lady. <laughs> so what happens is we follow both characters. So it's not a dual time span, but we follow from the POV of Kiss. Tess and Catherine per chapter. So you'll have Catherine's chapter, you'll have Tess's chapter, back and forth, back and forth. And essentially, you read about how they both get called into the doctor's office because then they realize, the doctor realizes that there's a mistake that happened here and eggs were switched and the baby actually belongs and you follow that and for me the premise of the story was really really interesting because I thought I really would love to know what would happen in situations like that has something like that actually ever really happened and um, it's 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 sad in some aspects um, because you think that well technically the baby belongs the child who is now, I think, the five or quite young, two, three, four, I don't know, somewhere there. The child who's quite young has now lived its whole life with this one family, but actually belongs to this other woman. And uh, so it's, it, 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 you watch the story unfold in that way, how uh, the one mom is not ready to let go of the, 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 the child because she feels like I raised this child. This is my baby. This is my kid. Um, but for me, I, I ended, ended up finding it quite uh, repetitive. I just kept on saying the same thing over and over again. At some point, I really did want to DNF it as well. I really did want to put it down, um, but I chugged through. I read it. I don't have much to say about it because I really wasn't crazy about it. Um, the twist for me wasn't miraculous or amazing as well but i just i thought it was okay 
I thought it was okay. Really and then I listened to All's Well by Mona Award. I'm going to put it here. This I absolutely loved. Oh my God, I absolutely loved it. It is weird. It's one of those books that you read and you're like, what the hell did I just read? Yeah, we follow a theater um, uh, 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 professor, right? She, she uh, does the, she, she heads the theatrical department of this uh, university. And she, what's her name? What's your name? What's your name? Miranda? Yeah, I think it's Miranda. There we go. So Miranda is this theatre professor who every year um, links up with her students and all of that and they do a Shakespeare play. So it, this particular year, everybody's thinking that, yes, we're looking forward to doing Macbeth and uh, Miranda's going to make us do Macbeth. All the students are really, really excited about it and that and the other, but Miranda's got her own plans. Miranda, in fact, wants to do Shakespeare's play, which is called All's Well, which in, in compared to all the other Shakespearean plays, it's not really one that stands out quite a lot. And because of that, the students are not really impressed by that. But anyway, they go ahead with it. Now, Miranda suffers from chronic pain and she's got chronic back pain, hip pain. And because of that, she's uh, on medication. So there's a lot of triggering subjects with regard to chronic pain and uh, addiction. And just we watch Miranda's descent into madness because of this constant pill taking and her incessant need to have this play play out the exact way that she wants, that she finds herself in a bar one night and she sees these three men who then say that, listen, you want it? Well, she sees them. Let's let's put it that way. Um, this is where you start watching Miranda descend into madness while she is trying to navigate through her life day in, day out, day in, day out. And her students actually start to see her um, descend into this madness. And it's wild. At some point, you're just like, what am I reading? Is this actually happening? Is it not happening? And uh, you watch her friend, Grace, just try to support her and to be there for her, but not knowing how. So there's a lot of... Um, there's a lot of character studies. There's uh, a great, the writing is just exceptional. Mona Award writes really, really well. Lots of great character studies, uh, but I loved this book. I don't know if I rated it a four or a five, but I really, really enjoyed how different it was from any of my reading experiences. And yeah, that, that's all I can say about that. That's all I can say about that. Kim yeah. Jong. <laughs> and then I listened to Kim Jong, born 1982 by Cho Namju. And I've been listening to a lot of translated works because I absolutely love getting into translated works. It's my thing, bro. It's my, it's my steez, man. I'm really, really enjoying that. And um, because of that, I listened to Kim Jong, born 1982. And you follow this woman. Kim Jong, who gets born into this family that has very high standards, but she's got, she's sort of like the middle sister, right? So she's the sister, she's got an older sister and she's got a younger sibling as well, but she's the sister that, you know, just... There's differences with regards to her life, what she wants to achieve, all the things that she wants to do for herself and for her life. She doesn't uh, she grows up not necessarily wanting to just be a wife and be married and have children. She wants to get into work. She wants to work. She wants to, she's got dreams and hopes for herself for being independent and all of that. And we watch her life throughout a various number of years. And in the story, there's quite a big um, conversation, a big debate about how women in Korea are seen uh, uh, in terms of what happens with how the government sees her, uh, sees them and how uh, men see them and how women are just seen to be, you know, they're good for getting married and making babies and how they're not necessarily seen to uh, be, you know, workplace moms and all of that and the judgment that is placed upon them. I thought that Kim Jong was 
amazing. I thought it was a fantastic book with a great storyline behind it um, because even through all the adversities, all the things that her parents would say, all the things that her colleagues would say, her, 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 her friends would say like, why aren't you doing this instead of doing this? Look, she ended up doing all those things, but she married into, she entered into a marriage where her husband was quite understanding of the fact that I can see that you want to work and I respect that and, and you should do that and all of that. But it's the message behind it, um, which, which came into play about, let's talk about the, 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 the gender disparities uh, with women in Korea and, and uh, how men are seen as opposed to how women are seen and how women are seen less than when it comes to men. I thought it was fantastic. It was fantastic. I really, really enjoyed it. Oh, I loved it. And then Kindred. Then I read Kindred and I read this one a couple of weeks ago and I've been wanting to read this book and finally I read it and I read it because uh, my good friend Charity was doing some work with Jonathan Ball Publishers where she had a read along of Kindred and I told her that I would read it at the same time as her and I did. She finished it before me but I, oh my god! Because even after reading the book, I actually watched the series, which was on Disney Plus. And it's a little bit different to the book, but I really, really enjoyed both of them. So in this one, this is sort of like a dystopian novel where it is set in two different time spans. So you've got, <coughs> so you've got Dana, who is, uh, it's set in 1976 and Dana and Kevin have just gotten married and they've just moved into their home. But something happens one day as they're unpacking and doing all their things, Dana gets pulled away and she falls, she gets pulled away. And when she opens her eyes, she is in 1815. And when she opens her eyes, she's outside, she's right by a lake. As she looks into this lake, she can see that there's a young boy drowning. So she runs into the lake saves this young boy from drowning. This boy is white, Dana is black. And as she saves him from drowning, you can imagine, it's 1815. The parents come, the mother sees, stay away from my kid, what the hell, girl? Who the hell you think you is? You little N-I-G-G-E-R, blah, 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 right? And Dana's like, where am I, right? She's wearing pants and this lady's wearing a dress with a corset and all of this. She's like, what is going on? So what happens is we follow Dana slipping back from 1976 to 1815 and she keeps going and coming back and every time this happens it's because the young boy that she saved in the water his name is Rufus is because Rufus has endangered his life in some way and Dana gets pulled back to the 18th century to save him every single time and at some point she gets pulled back with her husband Kevin and it's just crazy when you look at the dynamic of how Kevin gets treated when he gets pulled back and how Dana is treated because she's black and Kevin is white and it is fantastic rated it a five out of five loved it Octavia E Butler is an awesome awesome author her writing is exceptional how this book was written in 1990 Oh my gosh, I don't even know. This book was published in 1979 and it is so good right now. I, oof, oof. If you are a reader, I highly implore you read. Read this book, read this book. And then the last book, which brings us to the end of this video is The Writing Retreat. Um, this is by Julia Bartz. I really enjoyed this one as well. I didn't think it was fantastic. As someone who is a seasoned thriller reader, I thought it was okay. I thought it was a little bit basic. I thought it was okay. The writing, however, was really, really good. It was very, very atmospheric. It is a thriller and it follows What's her name? Alex. It follows Alex who gets an opportunity to go to this writing retreat herself and four other 
uh, aspiring authors. So she's also an author and she goes on this writing retreat to her favorite author's sort of uh, 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 estate, right? And when she gets there, she's there for 30 days. She's there with four other aspiring authors and they are there to actually write their first book. And whoever has the best book there, gets a chance of getting a publishing deal and uh, backing from the author Rosa Vallo herself. It's great. It was okay. It, it, it had a side um, story to it where you were also following Alex and Ren, her friend, who they had a falling out and Ren also happens to show up at the very same writing retreat. So you're watching them unfold like this and um, they hadn't spoken to each other and seen each other in years and they finally see each other. But then something starts to happen when they're on this retreat. And the first big thing that is a sign of a very big red flag is the fact that one of the writers is found dead. And it's just like, what... What do you even mean? And then it plays out like that, which I think, look, for me, it was, it was a good time. Uh, I was listening to it as well as reading it at the same time. I thought it was okay. I thought it was okay. So All those right. are the books that I've read between March and now. I think I am missing one or two books. But, um, yeah, I will be back again with a, a TBR, which I'm still kind of thinking about currently. I'm in the middle of reading Open Water, which is so, so good. So, so good. But, uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for being with me, readers. Uh, please do let me know what it is you are reading. If there's something you'd like me to read and get into, definitely comment down below. If you like the video, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. As always, thank you so much for choosing me over and over again. I'm going to go and I will see you in the next video. Until then, sayonara.